Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy, and today we have the finals of the recent League Cup that I got to go attend at Cape Fear Games in Wilmington, North Carolina. So, we actually did upload some other Top Cut rounds, if you did miss them, we have a Top 8 match and a Top 4 match, so I'll have links down below in the description if you guys do want to go check those out as well. But here in the finals, we have Grant Manley, he's going to be over on the left, he's going to be playing his... Baby Buzzwell, Garboder, Weavile, Shrine of Punishment deck. And then we have Alex Shalowski. He's going to be over on the right playing the very popular Azur Arc, Decidueye, Alolan, Ninetales deck. So I have to see how this matchup is going to go here. So let's see who's getting to go first. Okay, it appears that Alex is getting to go first. Let's see. Can he find himself that Professor Elms lecture? Ooh, that is rough. Just a pass. That is definitely unfortunate for him. So Grant is going to be able to get down a Rainbow Energy on the Sneasel. Very, you know, very smart way to, to realize that that's really the Pokemon he wants to go all in with uh, this game. Just because Alex runs a ton of different Pokemon with abilities and that Weavile with that Evil Admonition attack is going to do a great job. It does 50 for every uh, Pokemon your opponent has with an ability. But here, Alex is going to go for a Cynthia. So at least we will have a game here. Alex is going to be able to refresh his hand and maybe try to get some of his basics down. He wants to find himself, you know, of course, some Zeru is here, uh, maybe a couple of Rowlets, but I'm just not sure, honestly, what his a plan of attack here is, just because this Weavile is such a threat in this matchup. So, you know, if Alex has four Pokemon with abilities in play, that's 200 damage with Weavile, plus 30 from Choice Band, then plus Shrine of Punishment damage, whenever that comes into play. So, you know, Grant's going to be doing pretty good I, I think even if Alex is able to set up all these different Pokemon so I'm thinking right now Grant's deck is probably favorite here so let's see Alex is discarding a Vulpix and a Decidueye so let's see what he's going to opt to get down maybe a Zerua since that is you know one of the main parts of his engine uh, could also maybe go for a Ditto Prism Star as well that is an option so let's see what he's going to opt to get here Okay, it looks like he's going to go for a Lele, so he must not have anything in hand. He must not have a supporter in hand for next turn. He's probably just worried about getting benched out, uh, maybe by like this baby Buzzle or something like that. So here he's just going to have to Lele for a Cynthia. So kind of an ugly, you know, first game here so far from this uh, Alola Ninetales Decidueye deck. Uh, we saw Alex actually in the top eight match we upload, found that first turn Professor Elm's lecture every game. So... Um, a little bit unfortunate that this game is not going quite the same. But here he is going to be able to use that beacon attack on Alolan Vulpix as well. It allows him to search his deck for two Pokemon, put them into his hand. So he's starting to find some of the pieces he needs to stabilize a little bit. And luckily Grant did open with that Trubbish, which is kind of an annoying Pokemon to start with. Uh, that Garboder with that Trash Ranch attack is going to be very strong in the late game once Alex has played a lot of item cards. But starting with it, it's just not that great. So that is the one good thing Alex does have going for him. So Grant's going to get that Weavile into play, gets an energy on Buzzwell, going to get that Shrine of Punishment to start softening up that Lele. Uh, Shrine of Punishment, of course, that Stadium card, puts one damage counter on GXs and EXs in between turns. Grant plays none of those in his list, so uh, this Shrine of Punishment is going to be pretty one-sided throughout the course of this series here. So here it appears Grant's just going for a Cynthia. Have to wonder what he wants to find here. Uh, he could maybe try to go for something like a Switch if he finds that. I think that is a potential option just to maybe get a hit in on this Vulpix. So let's see what he finds here. Uh, we see a Garboder. Okay, beyond that, really not too much to work with here. Probably he's just going to have to pass. He does have a Pow Pad in hand, uh, so he could have to play that. I think I like holding on to it right now, though, just because he has a Cynthia in hand. So it looks like what he's going to do is just going to pass back over to Alex. So Alex, luckily, is able to start to stabilize before Grant can really put on a ton of pressure with his deck. So let's see what he's going to opt to do here. He's going to want to find some more basics probably as well. Okay, but here he's going to go for Professor Elm's lecture, searching out three more basic Pokemon. We'll have to see what he's going to find here. So it looks like he's eyeing himself down a Ditto, a Zerua, and maybe just a, another Rowlet could be good. I could see that being uh, good choices here. So let's see. He's just, I guess, just double checking, seeing what all he has in his deck. So I like kind of grabbing the Ditto here too, because if this Vulpix does get knocked out, he will have a second option to potentially get into 
his little nine tails. But here he's just gonna kind of forego the nine tails. Here he must be thinking, you know what? I can probably just set up just with my Zor arcs, and if this Vulpix gets knocked out in the process, eh, you know, it'll be okay. And he still actually has one more beacon at his disposal here, probably before something gets knocked out. So let's see what he's gonna find. No doubt, at least one Zor arc GX, I would imagine. So, okay, just two Zorark GX here. So let's see how Grant is going to respond on this next turn. You know, he's been able to get his Pokemon in play pretty easily. Got the Shrine of Punishment in play as well. So uh, he just hasn't been able to really attack much, which is the, you know, the only downside to his turn so far. So he doesn't have a Guzma, doesn't have a switching card or anything like that. But here he's just going to pow pad, putting in Lily and Cynthia back into his deck here. And let's see, he's going to get down Choice Band and just going for a Cynthia. Okay, and here, I'm not sure what he's looking for. I'm assuming just a switching card, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm really not sure exactly what Grant's digging for in particular, but I was going to say, I almost would have maybe have liked to have seen him hold off on the Pal Pad. He does have this Oranguru in place, so even if his hand isn't that great, he still has some supplementary form of draw power. Like, if he's aiming to hit a very specific card here, I think I would have liked to have see him hold off on the pow pad but if he's maybe just looking for a guzma or something i think it's fine playing the pow pad here potentially so here he's going to nest ball getting down that uh slugma so that's going to be nice whenever he can finally set up that mancarga that's going to help him find those pieces he needs to uh you know actually make some you know more impressive things happen on his turn like i said he's been setting up just fine just he can't move this garbiter out of the active spot but we do see he has a uh Guzma in his hand ready to go for next turn as well. So let's see. Alex does have the two Zor arcs, but let's see what he's going to go for. So here what I'm actually maybe even... Yeah, this is just kind of a difficult spot for him because both this Weavile and this Buzzwell are a bit of an issue. But I think if I'm targeting down anything, I'm thinking I'm probably going for this this Weavile because right now the Buzzle can do a pretty substantial amount of damage to Zorark but it's not enough to actually knock it out so without like a Diancie or something like that um so right now what uh I believe that Buzzle with Sledgehammer is doing 60 so times two for weakness is going to be uh 120 so yeah uh the Zorark is probably safe I think there is a combination of cards that could allow it to get knocked out but right now he's he's kind of safe but here he is going to go for a rare candy and a timer ball off of this alone nine tails here. So let's see what he's going to opt to do here. So no doubt he is trying to get these uh, decidueye set up. So we see it looks like a tails and a head. So he is going to get at least one Pokemon off of this timer ball. So he's going to get out a decidueye. And so yeah, this is. I really hope that he has a Guzma in hand to knock out this Weavile because we know Grant has that Guzma in his hand and he's going to be ready to take two prizes on his next turn if Alex doesn't have a way to deal with this. So let's see. We did see him go for the rare candy, so... Uh, so we are going to see that Sidui hit the board. We're going to see a DCE come down and going to trade away the rescue stretcher i think i actually would have preferred to see alex hang on to the dce here just in case he doesn't find a guzma or something because now that it's down if he doesn't find a guzma then grant can just target down this zorark with the energy and take out an additional resource from play so i think that might have actually been a bit of a misplay from alex there getting down that dc just a little preemptively so here it looks like he is going to use that feather ability to get two damage counters onto that buzzwell and then pass over to grant so grant's definitely in uh, you know, I think he, he found his window of opportunity to strike here. That was a big whiff on Alex not having a way to attack. Had he been able to take out that Weavile, he actually, I think, would have had potentially a pretty decent turn here. But as we can see, Grant has that uh, that Guzman ready to go. And it looks like he's going to bring up this Decidueye. So right now, he actually, I think, is hitting for 250. Since there are five Pokemon in play with an ability, 50 for each. Uh, Pokemon with an ability. So actually it's 280 with the choice ban. So here he's going to Ultra Ball as well. Probably going to grab himself that Mag Cargo. Uh, that way he can, you know, smooth over every turn and ensure that he has what he needs to take a knockout. So here he's going to put a Nest Ball on top of his deck. So probably just trying to find himself another Sneasel for the next turn whenever this 
uh, Weavile inevitably gets knocked out here. So here he is going to instruct with that Oranguru and get down that second Sneasel. Definitely seems like a good idea on Grant's part there. So at this point, I think Grant's honestly in a really good position. He has that mech cargo, so even once this Weavile goes down, he can just use that to find the next piece of the puzzle he needs to get this second uh, Weavile up and running. And let's see. So just a cut, and I'd probably imagine we'll see a knockout on this Decidueye. So Grant's going to take the first knockout, going down to four prizes here, and we'll probably see this Zor arc get promoted if I just had to guess. But no matter what he promotes, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> um, so it looks like he is going to promote the Ninetales. Interesting here. So maybe he's thinking about going for like a counter gain uh, type of play with the Ninetales. But even if he does that, it's not going to even knock out the Sneasel. It'll leave it with 10 HP remaining, if I remember correctly. So let's see what he's going to opt to do. We're going to see a field board getting rid of the Shrine of Punishment and probably the uh, Choice Band on the Buzzle as well. So it looks like he's pretty torn um, what he wants to get rid of here. Uh, he does have a rainbow energy. So maybe he is thinking about going for that type of play I was talking about. But here we're just going to see a Cynthia. Very interesting. So if, if we are seeing the Ninetales get promoted, to me that tells me you're either going for a Guzma or you're going for a counter gain type of play. And we didn't see the rainbow energy in his hand come down onto this Ninetales. So now I'm just a little bit confused as to what Alex's plan of attack is for this turn. Um, he does still have some trades at his disposal, so he can potentially draw back into an energy plus counter gain. So it's it can happen, but we'll just have to see what he's kind of going for at this turn. So we do see a rainbow energy, but does he find himself what he needs here? He does have an enhanced hammer that actually could be decent uh, to maybe force Grant here to find another energy. So we are going to see the Enhanced Hammer come down. I think we would have liked to have seen that maybe after he trades and kind of figures out what he wants to do with his turn. Because if he draws into a way that enables him to... Okay, so we're not even going to see a trade from Alex here. Just a pass. So maybe all of the cards in his hand are just too important to get rid of. So this is just another free two prizes for Grant at this point. It has the Rainbow Energy. So we're going to see a Smooth over here. Uh, I imagine we'll probably see another... Okay, it looks like he's going to be going for a unit energy. Just in, in anticipation of this Weavile getting knocked out, he's going to want down another energy on the following turn. And we're going to see a Lily, so he's going to be able to grab that unit energy and a few more cards here. Uh, he does have an Ultra Ball in hand as well, so he could even try to get down another Weavile, but really not in a huge rush for that this turn. So here we are going to see this Zorark finally get promoted, but I think it's just honestly a little too late at this point. You know, Grant has what he needs to clean up this game, and it looks like they're just scooping up and going to game two. Makes sense. Try to save some time here. Make sure your games don't go to time. But um, yeah, we saw Grant took a pretty dominant victory there. I think Alex maybe uh, struggled a little bit on his last turn there. I think that was definitely a window to make something happen. I definitely would have liked to have seen that Weavile get knocked out. So uh, maybe just... Maybe this is Alex's first time playing against this deck with his, and he's just kind of trying to feel out this matchup as he goes, and might just be confused as to be like, what might be the strongest plays he's supposed to be making against this deck. That'd be my best guess here. So, we'll have to see how uh, he's going to you know, adjust accordingly for the next game. He is going to get to go first. This is, of course, a best two out of three series, and the loser of each game does get to decide who goes first, so... Um, no doubt he's also going to be looking for, of course, that Professor Helms lecture to get out his Pokemon a little bit quicker than he did last game as well. Uh, similarly for Grant, even though he was able to get a lot of things set up and into play, he was unable to move that Trubbish for a few turns. So, of course, he's going to be looking for a better starter Pokemon. Uh, most likely the Baby Buzzle is going to be the big thing he's really going to be looking for, uh, just because you can start putting on pressure very quickly with Buzzwell. So both players just shuffling up here. Uh, looks like they're about to, to get going here. And Grant actually does have that buzzle we were just talking about in his opening hand. So definitely a very good start from him so far. He does have that Oranguru with the Instruct ability in his hand as well, if I saw correctly. Definitely not a card you mind seeing in your opening hand, as long as you're not having to start with it. 
Looks like he's opting just to kind of hang on to it for now. Maybe just in case of like a first turn Guzma or something like that. He really wants to make sure that this Buzzwell is what he is going to lead this game with and not something else. He's determined not to have something stuck like last game. So uh, Alex did take a mulligan there as well. So um, we'll have to see how what he's going to get here. Uh, he did have that Aloha Ninetales GX, the water one, in his opening hand. That actually could be a relevant card here too. Just because Grant's really not going to be taking big one-hit knockouts. So if he's able to actually set up that Ninetales without a lot of Pokemon with abilities in play, that actually could be a very big card. And here he's actually starting with Vulpix. So we even could see that type of strategy uh, end up happening this game. We'll have to see. But here he's going to go for an Ultra Ball. Let's see what he's going to opt to get rid of. Uh, Fairy Energy and a Guzma. So, uh, you know, Grant's probably happy to see that Guzma hit the discard. He's probably thinking, uh, glad I didn't bench that Oranguru just in case of something like that. But either way, Alex probably uh, would have gone for this Elms Lecture, assuming he had the uh, out to it either way. So here it looks like he's going to go for a Ditto and two Rowlets. I definitely like this. Gives you some flexibility in case either the Vulpix or Zerua gets knocked out. You have a different Pokemon um, that can evolve into either of their evolutions here. So what I kind of want to see though is, like I said, I think that Water Alone and Ninetales is going to be a big factor. It has a great GX attack in this matchup, and you can also kind of snipe around with its first attack as well. That's really what I want to see come down in this matchup at some point. Here we're going to see a Nest Ball from Grant probably finding. Okay, it looks like he's going for that Slugma. He has that Oranguru on the field, so no doubt as soon as he sets up Mikargo, the soonest he's going to be able to really start to find exactly what he needs every turn here. So the other card he's going to be looking for, of course, is going to be a Sneasel. He probably recognizes that's going to be a very big card in this matchup, so he's also going to be looking for one of those. So we're going to see a Choice Band come down and then a Lily. And looks like we find a ditto of his own here, so that actually can be good. Definitely want to get that down before these Decidueyes come into play, otherwise it's not a safe Pokemon to really see. So here we're just going to see a pass back over to Alex, and like I said, if he can find himself the Aloha Ninetales with uh, the Water one, he's going to be in a good spot here. So let's see what he gets. And... It looks like both of his timer balls failed, which is definitely a little bit unfortunate for him. Uh, he definitely would have liked to have found at least one of the different Ninetales in his deck. But I definitely think, like I said, the water one is going to be a very important card here. So we're going to see a trade getting rid of that Rescue Stretcher, getting a counter gain down on this Ditto, and then just a Cynthia to refresh his hand here. So unfortunate for him, that timer ball did fail. That could have found him, him into, uh, you know, that, that nine tails I keep referencing over and over. Now, I really hope that Alex recognizes how strong that card in this matchup is and doesn't get, you know, too greedy with benching Pokemon with abilities because that card is going to be at its best when there's not many abilities in play and can't be one shot by something like Weavile. And also in the early portions of the game right now, there's not a whole lot of items in discard either, so Garbodor's really not any danger of taking a one hit knockout. So let's see what he is going to find here. Uh, he does have an Ultra Ball, so he actually can get that out if he chooses to. So we're going to see an Ultra Ball. Let's see what he's going to discard and what he's going to find, more importantly, here. So we're going to see a Cynthia and a Rally hit the discard. So he definitely has a couple options. He can go for a Zorark, he can go for Nine Tails, either one. Could go for Decidueye if he has a rare candy, so we'll have to see what route he's going to go here. And it looks like he is going to get out that uh, Fairy alone Nine Tails. So interesting. Looks like he's just kind of going the same strategy he did last turn, just trying to get those Decidueyes in play. But, um, you know, it just... Uh, granted, he didn't have the strongest start last game, but I'm just not sure how strong that strategy is going to be against this particular type of deck we're seeing here. So we're going to see an Ultra Ball and a Rare Candy, so it looks like he is going to be trying to set up a Decidueye this turn, it appears. So, is he going to discard some more cards from his hand to get out this Decidueye? Okay, it looks like he is going to be going for it. Discarding a Rare Candy and an Acerola. So, uh, he does need to be mindful of how many items he is putting in the discard pile because this Trash Lanch Garboder will be a threat at some point in the game as well. I think right now he's hitting... or he, I think he has around 6 or 7 items in discard right now. So, definitely needs to be careful not to put down too many more here. And we're just going to see a Feather Arrow getting on 20 on that Ditto. But no doubt, Grant is going to try to evolve that this turn. 
So we're going to see an Ultra Ball getting rid of Guzma and a Cynthia here. Going for that Weavile, definitely a good idea on Grant's part. Prevent that uh, Ditto from going down. And then we're just going to see a Cynthia here refreshing his hand yet again. So he's going to be looking for an energy to start attacking with. And of course, that Meg Cargo as well. Uh, as soon as that Meg Cargo comes online, his deck is really going to kind of, you know, come alive and, you know, help him find exactly what he needs every turn here. So let's see what Grant is going to find off of this six. At the very least, he probably wants to see an energy, if nothing else. And there we do see it. We see the fighting energy. So he's definitely going to like getting that down as opposed to the rainbow. Uh, staying at 130 HP is very, very important here. It forces your opponent to have, you know, a full bench with Zorark plus a Feather Arrow with the Decidueye to take a knockout. And so here we're just going to see a Sledgehammer softening up this Alone Ninetales. And the Shrine of Punishment damage is going to start coming into play. Uh, and softening up some of these other GXs for Grant as well. So let's see what he's going to do. He did discard a Cynthia. I'm imagining one of the cards in his hand is going to be... Okay, it's just going to be another Cynthia, so that's good. He can refresh his hand. And so he's going to be looking for a counter gain, I would imagine, but he already has one in play. So maybe he does play two in his list. His list. I'm really not sure exactly the counts he, he has. But... Um, yeah, so we'll have to see what route he is going to go here. And he does still have a trade at his disposal. Oh, wait, no. Um, or, yeah, yeah, he still does have a Zorak in play, so he still can trade. He's going to trade away that Professor Elm's Lecture. Definitely a great card you want to be able to get rid of at this point in the game. We're going to see another Zorak come online. So it looks like he's kind of, you know, you know foregone the whole Water Ninetales type of strategy. Um, I definitely think that would have been the way to go here. You know, maybe not evolving into quite so many Pokemon with abilities and just kind of walling with that guy for a little while. And I don't believe we see a counter gain or anything like that, so we might just have to see a pass from Alex here. And just, we're going to see 20 come down on that Weavile with the Sidui and then just a pass. So yeah, definitely, definitely not the greatest turn there from Alex. Probably didn't go the way he wanted, but let's see what Grant is going to do to respond. He's going to get down that unit energy on the Buzzwell. And going to go for a uh, Lily here. And it looks like he has another Weavile in his hand. Unfortunately, he does not have a Sneasel laid down anywhere at this point. That is one thing that is a little bit unfortunate. If this Weavile does get goosened up, he's not going to have another one to be able to respond with for at least two turns. So that is the only downside to how Grant's board is looking right now, but he's almost kind of even getting in range of Trash Ranch, knocking out some of these Lele's. So honestly, he's probably still in a fine spot. He's able to just kind of sit back and then just soften up stuff with this Buzzwell without needing a whole lot of resources to really, you know, stay going every turn. So we're going to see another energy come down here. We're going to see a trade, getting rid of that Tapu Lele definitely seems like a good idea there. Uh, another trade getting rid of Vulpix. And I believe he has Rare Candy Decidueye in hand, if I saw correctly. Yes, yeah, so we are going to see that Decidueye come down. And, uh, you know, we can see more damage come onto this Sneasel. And actually, he's in a situation where he can... Uh, okay. Well, here what he's going to do is use that GX attack to take an automatic knockout on an Ultra Beast. I was going to say, if he went for the first attack on 9 TLs, he could have even did 70 and then done the 30 damage to pick off the the weavile here as well uh, i think either one's probably okay though either way he can still pick off this weavile with uh these decidueyes next turn so here let's see he's just gonna go for a cynthia and it looks like he has two trubbish on the on the bench i think i think that's one at the very end and then one in the middle there so he's kind of switching gears saying you know what you've already played so many items i can actually just kind of go for trash ranch at this point and win that way as well even if i don't go the weavile route here so we're gonna see a pal pad here coming down that's gonna allow him to get two supporter cards back into his deck i think that was a cynthia and a guzma we saw come back in there Beyond that, I didn't get a good look at his hand, so I'll have to see if he's going to do anything else this turn. But honestly, he has pretty much what he wants right now. He can evolve into that Garboder as well, but here, here he's just going to take a knockout. Um, I think he's kind of just trying to keep his options open in case the Trubbish gets guzma because right now he's really in no danger of that Trubbish getting knocked out, unless it's by a Guzma, and in which case, 
uh, the guard motor would go down. So I think this is actually great of him saving that guard motor until he decides which Trubbish he wants to actually go with in case of a Guzma. So here it looks like Alex is going to get down another Zerua here. Just trying to ensure that he can keep drawing cards. And he is going to get down this Rainbow Energy on Zorark. And since he has that counter gain, he can actually uh, attack just for this one Rainbow Energy. So what he can do here is he can Feather Air once, knocking out that Weavile. Then another Feather Air on the active, plus Riotous Beating with a full bench will knock out this Buzzle. So that's actually a pretty decent little turn from Alex there. His deck is, you know, starting to stabilize a little bit. You know, I think Grant is... Unfortunately for Alex, I think still in a better spot because of all the items that are in the discard pile and all of the abilities that are in play as well. But let's see how he's going to respond here. He has this Nest Ball. He's going to get down another Sneasel. Definitely good. But at this point, I think honestly he can just trade with uh, Trash Lanch and these Weaviles and, and be fine. He only has to take two more knockouts, whereas Alex needs to take three. So I think Alex might just be maybe one knockout behind sealing up this game here. But we'll have to see how it's going to go. You know, Decidueye does enable, you know, interesting plays where you can take more than one knockout in a turn, and that definitely can be a way he can catch up in this. So he does have a Rainbow Energy and a Unit Energy. He's going to get down the Unit Energy on the Sneasel in preparation for next turn. And then I imagine we'll just see a Trash Lanch. I'm not sure how much Grant's hitting for exactly. The Zorark is going to resist it by 20, but I'd imagine Grant's hitting for around 120, 140, if I had to guess. So let's see here. Looks like they're doing some damage calculation right now. And okay, it looks like it is apparently a knockout. So. Yeah, unfortunately, the fact that Grant was able to take a knockout there, I think, might be the nail in the coffin. I just don't see a way that Alex can take three prizes here before Grant can take one GX knockout. He has Guzma in hand, too. So even if, you know, somehow Alex tries to force, like, a seven-prize game, uh, Grant is definitely going to have a way to deal with that. So let's see. He's just going to adjust for all of that Shrine of Punishment damage, and we'll have to see what route he's going to go here. Um, it looks like he might have another Zorark in hand if that is the case. Um, he will probably be able to knock out this Guard Boater this turn, but beyond that, uh, he just really has to hope that Grant doesn't have much of anything. If he has Judge in his deck, that actually could be a card that he might want to see here uh, to maybe disrupt Grant a little bit going into this next turn. That's one of the only things I can really think of here. So here he's going to go for an Enhanced Hammer. That's actually pretty decent here. Now, we do know Grant has the Rainbow in hand, but from Alex's perspective, he can keep that energy off and take a knockout on this Guard Boater. That's definitely going to be good for him as well. So he, I think, also wants to bench something to ensure he doesn't need Feather Arrow to uh, take a knockout on this Guard Boater here. So he does have a Zeru in hand. I definitely want to see that come down. There's really no danger of it coming down. Uh, you know, if Grant's going to Guzma anything at this point, it's going to be... Uh, a GX and he would just take a knockout that way. So I think the Zerua is perfectly fine to go down unless he's thinking about setting up nine tails, but here he is going to ultimately decide to get that down. And we're going to see probably another Feather Air come down that Sneasel and then just a Riotus beating. So, you know, Alex, even though not a huge turn, he did take the energy out of play and take a knockout. But here we know Grant has the Rainbow Energy and he has the Rescue Stretcher in hand. So he is going to be able to take a knockout with that evil admonition attack on Weavile there. Going to take this finals match 2-0 with his uh, Baby Buzzwell Garboder <laughs> Shrine of Punishment Weavile deck that he had here. Uh, but yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this series. And of course, too, like I said, if you did miss the top eight match and top four match we upload, I will have links down below in the description for you to check those out as well. But as usual, feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.